Hey, Doug McKnight here. I'm going to tell you my Home Invader streamer. It's a really good fly for uh, predator fish. Um, uh, we use them quite a bit out here for, for big trout, but they'll take any fish that's willing to eat a, a small minnow imitation. Um, first thing I do is stick a TMCO 700 hook in the vise. It's a, kind of a heavy wire, uh, steelhead, big game type hook. Um, Next thing I'm going to do is run just a little bead of zappa gap in the front half of the hook shank and take some, some lead wire and just run a small section of lead wire onto the hook. You want to leave a little bit of space um, up towards the eye of the hook. And what this is going to do is going to, number one, make the fly heavy, and number two, um, it's going to make a nice um, area for these lead dumbbell eyes to sit on. And if you do this trick with the lead wire and use some zappa gap, it's very, very difficult to get these lead eyes to move. So put those lead eyes on right on top of those uh, lead wraps, a little bit more zappa gap. and put a few more wraps on those guys to really ratchet them down. Not a bad idea to check whether they're perpendicular to the hook shank. Um, if they're not, the fly will not uh, want to ride right. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take a pair of uh, marabou plumes and uh, I tie this in a bunch of different colors. Uh, I'm going to tie you a white one here, which is probably the funnest to fish just because you can really see it in the water and then you can see the fish uh, chase and clobber it. So I'm going to trim those to maybe, oh, maybe about three inches long. Kind of put them together. Maybe moisten your fingers a little bit and, and stroke those fibers back to, to uh, you know, keep them, keep them, uh, together and then I'm gonna measure the marabou so the hook point is maybe about in the front two-thirds um, so in this case maybe about uh, about two and a half inches long and just crank those down with a bunch of really tight thread wraps maybe a dozen of them or so and then trim these butt ends off. Just like that. That's about perfect. Next thing I do is take some white uh, foxtail and I'm going to cut off a pretty good bunch of hair. About like that. And I'm going to there's a bunch of short under fur in here. I'm just going to grab some of that stuff, hold it by the tips, and pull some of that out. Just like that. Now you want the ends of the foxtail to come back maybe about halfway um, on the marabou. And what I'm going to do is just take that wad of hair and just kind of rest it on top of the hook shank. And I take my other fingers here and just kind of apply some pressure. And some of that hair is going to move down. I'm just going to take a loose wrap of thread and go all the way around twice and then pull it tight. Just a gathering wrap. And if you do it right, you should have even coverage of hair all the way around the shank. And if you miss a spot, you can grab a little bunch and, and stick it right back in there. Um, and then trim the butt ends. I usually don't trim them flush, usually about even with the lead eyes. About like that. And then pull them back and tie in front a little bit. And then move my thread right up to um, the eye of the hook and just repeat the same process. Grab another bunch of hair. Pull it 
pull out the under for and on this one I'm gonna kinda divide that bunch of hair in the two equal parts in my fingers about like that and I'm just gonna stick those right on the eye of the hook like that grab it with my other hand and do that same thing again make a two gathering wraps and then pull it tight and hold it right here so it doesn't move a couple of real tight wraps on there and then just trim these butt ends as close to the eye as you can more wraps on there to kind of clean up that eye and also too if you missed a spot you know just grab another little hunk and uh, and stick it in there but that's about right we got even coverage all the way around okay the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna put on this particular color we're gonna use three different colors of flash um, First one we're going to do is just silver flashaboo and we're going to grab maybe four or five strands and we're going to cut them twice as long as we need them and then we're going to bend them around the thread like that and then install them right over the point of the hook just like that. Maybe trim the ends just so they it's even with the marabou. Next thing we're going to do is take some uh, some UV herringback crystal flash and just do the exact same thing. right over the point of the hook just like that trim them to length last one we're gonna do is just some black flashaboo right over the top Okay, the last thing we're going to do is take a, uh, this is just a, a, a badger cape. Um, this is not dry fly hackle. This is, you know, very soft, webby, essentially streamer hackle. And we're going to take kind of a, a matched pair of neck hackles, just like that. And you want to have them you know, obviously long enough feathers to, to come back to <clears throat> the end of the flash and the end of the marabou. Um, and what I like to do is, is put them together, you know, to where the tips are even, and then measure them both at the same time, right up even with the, the very eye of the hook, and trim them. So now you got two feathers that are exactly the same and exactly the same size. And kind of where you want to tie these in is you want to stick them kind of on the sides of the hook, about like that. And you want to line up where you cut them with just the end of the head of the the thread right there in the eye of the hook that way you don't have to go back and trim them um, and so once you kind of get them installed on the sides here you just hold them in place and with a loose wrap of thread just gather them up and you don't want to crank down on them too much you want to get a couple of you know medium tension wraps on them 
And then once you get a couple of medium tension wraps on them, crank down on it a few times. And that'll keep them from, from rolling and getting out of position. And just do the same thing on the other side. And that's about it. Um, just a whip finish. A little bit of the trim job here at the head. Make sure that eye is nice and clean. You can use head cement on this. I highly suggest that you use Zappa Gap just because we only have six wraps of thread holding those hackles in. And even with head cement, you know, you're unhooking a fish, you'll pull one of those feathers out. Um, with Zappa Gap, they really do get locked in. So I just add a little bit of Zappa Gap and then grab a bodkin and just spread it around. Oftentimes, I'll spread that Zappa Gap right up onto that feather and onto the stem and gather everything up and just kind of give it a pinch right here. And you got a finished home invader. Um, one thing that, that you'll find when you fish this fly, it's got a ton of motion. Um, it's very realistic as far as um, silhouette and action and looks and uh, uh, Find some big fish and, and throw this thing to it and make it look scared. I, th I think you'll, you'll be shocked at what this thing can do.